What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast. I am, of course, your host, Ethan Smith, who does the most. Hope you all are having a wonderful Thursday, October 14th. Got some Pirates news today. Eric Gonzalez will, of course, be heading to free agency. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about Dodgers and Giants tonight for Game 5. It's going to be a wonderful game to watch. We talked a little bit about it with Adam yesterday. But I'm going to give some more thoughts on it today. And we're also going to be previewing the ALCS, which will be kicking off this weekend. Before we begin, though, I want to thank you all for making Locked on Pirates your first listen of the day every single day. I really appreciate it so much. And with that said, let's get into today's episode. You are Locked on Pirates. Your daily Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And what's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast today on Thursday, October 14th. Kind of another intro kind of thing, but of course I am your host, Ethan Smith. You can follow me right here on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan. We're doing another outdoor podcast today. I am once again at work in the beautiful city of Savannah. Not a cloud in the sky today. Beautiful day to talk about the Pirates, to talk about baseball, to talk about everything going on in the world of baseball. And as I keep saying, we got hockey back, we got football, playoff baseball is in full swing. The U.S. Men's National Team is also playing some soccer right now. The WNBA Finals are going on, so it's a great time to be a sports fan right now. And as we get into today's podcast, a little bit of news on the news front for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Eric Gonzalez, as I tweeted earlier today, will not be returning to the Pittsburgh Pirates in 2022. He has opted to go to free agency. The Pirates, I guess, had no interest in re-signing him. Eric Gonzalez, of course, this year, looking at the amount of middle infielders that started the season for the Pittsburgh Pirates this year, those likes of Hoy Park, Rodolfo Castro, Kevin Newman, Adam Frazier before he was traded. Eric Gonzalez just never really could find a spot for himself um, in Pittsburgh. He even got option to AAA Indianapolis. I think in free agency, more than likely, he will probably be Else, like he's obviously going elsewhere, but he will probably be getting a minor league contract in free agency. I don't see Eric Gonzalez as a starting shortstop. And again, he wasn't a terrible player. Um, his stats are nothing that are going to light your world on fire or anything. But when the Pirates have so many young outfielders to choose from, which I've been talking about in length for the last couple of weeks, with uh, the likes of Tucapita Marcano probably going to be coming up next year, uh, Michael Escato, another option that the Pirates could be looking at. That still includes O'Neill Cruz as well. O'Neill Cruz, Cole Tucker, Kevin Newman, Rodolfo Castro, Hoy Park, uh, Michael Chavis. There's a lot of middle infield options for the Pirates heading into 2022. So to move on from Eric Gonzalez, not really the biggest deal. He already said he wants to go to free agency as well. So it doesn't really bother me too much that he made that decision. And later in this offseason, once arbitration and 40-man roster stuff all comes out, I will probably start doing my way too early uh, position starters at some point. Um, the middle infield will probably be the at length, probably the longest one. Um, just because if you look at like even with the Eric Gonzalez move, if you look at uh, what the Pirates are looking into this offseason, I've already said they need to look into some veteran pitching. The pitching staff is very young. It's still developing. So we're going to see what we can get from that in the likes of uh, Miguel Yahure and other guys like that. Um, but it also has to keep in mind that you need some veterans on this team. Tyler Anderson was a big reason why they were able to trade him and add some other prospects. But I would still look into the idea of one or or, uh, two year deals instead of one year deals, keep these guys here, um, trade them after the second year when a lot of these guys like Rowenzi Contreras and uh, um, some of the other top pitchers in the organization are ready to go. Um, But again, a way too early 2022 lineup would be just way too hard to do right now just because you don't know who the Pirates are offering arbitration to. You don't know who's going to be on the 40-man roster yet. You don't know what kind of moves they're going to make. Um, right field is also a pretty big question mark as of right now. Uh, pretty much everywhere else other than right field and who starts in the middle infield are very big question or uh, not very big questions. We already know Key Brian Hayes, Brian Reynolds, Ben Gamble. Uh, Jacob Stallings, Colin Moran, all those guys will more than likely be starting at their positions heading into 2022 just because they gave us no reason to lose those positions. Um, But again, the Eric Gonzalez move, 
not that big of a deal to me. It's not going to be that big of a deal to the Pirates either, especially, again, you can never have too many infielders in your system, and they have a plenty of them right now. Leover Peguero, Nick Gonzalez, uh, Tucapita Marcano, who I've mentioned before, who they picked up in the Adam Frazier trade, who's a lot like Adam Frazier, and I am excited to see him play hopefully in 2022. Um, but Eric Gonzalez has never really fit into that mold. He was a veteran player, but he just wasn't good enough like Kevin Newman is uh, defensively or offensively. Um, and again, there's not much to say about it um, besides the fact that thank you, Eric Gonzalez, for playing for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Any player that comes through here, I usually am very fond of. And hopefully you have the best of endeavors towards you. And this is a short first segment because there's a lot of other things that we're going to get into today regards to playoff baseball. Before we do that, though, I want to let you know about Rock Auto. Rock Auto has all the parts your car will ever need. It is serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Why go to all of these big auto parts stores and try to find the parts for your car, but all they're going to tell you is they're going to get on the phone with somebody that in that place that's going to try to do something for them. And guess what? They're not going to have it, and they're going to have to deliver the parts from somewhere else. Why do that when you can go on rockauto.com and they'll have all the parts your car will ever need? You could save up to 30 to 100% less um, and pay that less than you would at these big auto park chain stores. Rock Auto, again, is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. And when you go to rockauto.com and you click in the how did you hear about us box, let them know that Ethan Smith of the Locked On Pirates podcast and the Locked On Podcast Network sent you to get, you maybe know, you never know. They might send you a little deal over there, but Rock Auto is very awesome. They're very cool people. And I really enjoy their company as well. I've used them before to fix my car, so you should as well. Moving into uh, what is going on tonight in the world of sports. The Pittsburgh Penguins, of course, play tonight uh, for Pittsburgh people. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Philadelphia Eagles are also playing a football game as well. Um, but in regards to the Pittsburgh Penguins, make sure you go check out Hunter Hodes over at Locked On Penguins. He's doing a phenomenal job kicking off the season over there. But in terms of baseball, it's a shame that we only get five games of the series, but we will be seeing Corey Niebel, Kniebel pitch for the Dodgers. So that's going to be a very interesting thing there. Um, but our Locked On Insiders have a little bit to say on their approach to game five for the Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants tonight at Oracle Park. So the Giants were obviously up in the series heading into this game. They fall to a 5-1 to one deficit in this game. Is it hard for them not to look past to the next game and just think, you know what, it, it wasn't our night. We've got to move on to game five. No, I think that they wanted to win, obviously, in, until the last few outs. They kind of know. They see the writing on the wall a little bit. But, um, no, I think that you just say, hey, we, we got in this position. If we if, Before the series, if we had one game to win it all, I think we'd take that. I think that yeah. – so. They're, they're in a good spot. I, I don't think that any of those guys are panicking. There's a lot of veteran guys that can talk to the younger guys and make sure that they're um, handling the things that they need to handle the right way. I mean, they're, they're, they're a really good team, and I don't think they're going to be scared of the moment at all. I think that, you know, Buster Posey's had a great series. He's the leader on that team, and, and I expect him to keep doing that uh, when they get back to San Francisco. Yeah, I really agree there with Gordon. Um, the Giants, of course, have been just the wi most wild team, the biggest surprise of the 2021 season. A lot of the uh, talk around them was they're going to fall off eventually. They're going to fall off eventually. Well, now, tonight in Oracle Park at home against their hated Dodger rivals, and the first time these two teams have ever played in the postseason, they have their chance to prove it. And realistically – if you had to ask me who wins in one game, I think I have to pick the Dodgers here. Uh, I just think their talent level is way too high. I think they're going to get the job done. I think they're going to figure it out. But he did make good points there. The Giants do have a ton of veterans on this team. Evan Longoria, Buster Posey, Brandon Crawford, Brandon Belt. They have a lot of guys here that know what this moment is like. Buster Posey, of course, has been with the Giants for who knows how long, has won multiple World Series championships with this team, and they have Logan Webb going out there. And as I mentioned on the podcast yesterday, Logan Webb, of course, for only the 30th pitcher all time to have over seven innings pitched, over 10 strikeouts, no walks, and only allow five hits or less. So he will be on the mound tonight. And that's the thing I think to be the fatal flaw here for the Los Angeles Dodgers is Corey uh, Kniebel, of course, naturally a bullpen arm usually. 
Um, so they're going to be kind of in a bullpen mode here, but I do think you will see some of the starters come in later in the game. If Logan Webb gets on fire, though, like he did in game one, the Dodgers are in trouble, and Logan Webb could start going on a Madison Bumgarner-type reign here over the next couple of weeks if he really has a good outing tonight and propels the Giants into it. And meanwhile, another crazy thing about this postseason, the Atlanta Braves are just sitting here watching this game to see who they're going to play. And, I mean, I did not expect Atlanta to beat Milwaukee. I thought Milwaukee was going to be an NL favorite heading into this because I thought the Giants and the Dodgers, as they are, were going to kill each other. And for all intents and purposes, Atlanta was just a better team in that series. They were just playing better. They shut down the Brewers' offense. The Brewers are going to have to look into offense moving into next year. And realistically, if the Pirates can take anything from what they've seen in these playoffs, pitching is very important. Offense, probably more important because, I mean, we've seen a lot of uh, offense from the Houston Astros. We talked about that series at length the other day. We're going to talk about it a little bit more uh, here in a little bit. Um, but Houston, they prided themselves on pretty much really good pitching, not great pitching, and a strong offense. I mean, that offense down there in Houston, they get stuff done. But in far as in terms of what I would say tonight, I think Mookie Betts is going to have a big game, as he usually always does. I think that um, Cody Bellinger may even have a big hit somewhere in there. Um, I think all the big players are going to show out tonight. They know it's the one game. Uh, and, I mean, the Dodgers already have the experience this postseason with having to play in one game, and that Cardinals game was no easy game for them. I mean, they had to have a walk-off to win that game. The Cardinals were very close to – finishing off the Dodgers at that point. But even better, though, the Cardinals fired Mike Schilt today. A uh, very interesting move. Um, locked on Cardinals, of course, Lucas Smith. You want to hear more about that, I believe, tomorrow. He will be talking about that a lot more in depth. Um, I thought that was a surprising move, especially at the end, how way they ended the season. I know the season didn't go really as planned for the Cardinals this year. It was one of those weird years for them where they just started really slow. The Pirates, as I mentioned yesterday, the best record they had against any of their NL Central foes came against the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, so that was just kind of one of those things. But, I mean, this NLDS game, and this is like I said yesterday with Adam, I think it's a shame that we only get to see five games of the series between – the two best teams in baseball left now, especially records wise. These are the two best teams in baseball by a long shot, 107 and 55 and 106 and 56. I mean, whoever ends up winning this game will end up with the better record and the tiebreaker. So, I mean, that's really what this game comes down to is who picks up win 109 or 107 or, you know, like who picks it up. And that's where we're going to be at with that today. And again, if you're asking me for my official prediction, I am going to go with the Los Angeles Dodgers. I think they're going to win in an offensive slugfest. I think Logan Webb, um, he did it once. I th he has the potential to do it again, but does he do it again? That's a big ask, um, especially against a strong Dodgers offense. But I think the Giants get Corey Kniebel out of the game pretty early. They force a lot of the Dodgers pitchers into the game, and I think the Dodgers pull it out 9-8. to eight with a go-ahead run in the top of the ninth inning and shut the door late in the game. But if you want to bet on this game, make sure you go to betonline.ag. Betonline.ag, of course, is all the sports you need. It's back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron, the baseball diamond, the ice rink, as teams are back for another football, hockey, and playoff baseball season. As always, BetOnline is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. You see it on the screen. Don't forget to use the promo code LOCKED ON to receive your bonus. From football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite casino games in vegas don't wait to take advantage of the amazing offers available for the 2021 season bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports bet online where the game starts and as i said yesterday we did talk about the alcs a little bit with adam but how about we hear from gordon and our insiders about what he thinks is going to happen in this series between the houston astros and ben Sherrington's former team the boston red sox positive things that you're saying about both of these teams so make your pick right now who's winning the series 
God, uh, I, I haven't even thought about it. So I'm just going to go what I think. I think the Astros look too good. Um, they they have the pitching. The pitching looked really good for them, but their at bats are just just really really good. Their whole lineup from top to bottom is having great at bats, and the Red Sox are too. But I think the Astros are going to win. I think they're going to win in five or six games. I'll, I'll give myself a little leeway. <laughs> well. So Adam says five or six games for the Houston Astros, as mentioned yesterday. I think this Red Sox team is special. I think they really have a real shot at pulling this off against a strong Astros team. But you look at the way the Astros played in that uh, White Sox series, they just looked unstoppable. They looked unbeatable. Uh, Their offense was just scoring runs at will against the Boston Red Sox. And realistically, looking at it, the Red Sox, of course, go into the series as not being the better team. But that's how they played all postseason. They didn't. Nobody expected them to win against the Yankees. They weren't favored on BetOnline.ag. They weren't favored against the Tampa Bay Rays, especially after that first game when Tampa Bay absolutely ripped them apart. Then they ripped off three straight wins. I think this Red, to- uh, Red Sox team, again, is a lot like the 2013 team. I think they have a real shot at this. I think they really could pull it off. And I think the Red Sox win it in six or seven games, depending on if they want to close it out. Um, or like when they close it out. I think Nathan Eovaldi is going to be a big reason why they do this. I also think Chris Sale is going to get back to his old ways against a strong Houston Astros offense. I think the Astros pitching is going to be very good as well. I think this series has a real shot to be a very defensive series. I don't expect a lot of offense, but the Astros offense, man, I say that, the Astros offense can really, really turn it up when they need to. So this could be one of those games where, or one of those series where the Red Sox or the Astros just rip them apart and rip them a new one, but we'll see. Today's podcast was a little short. Um, I'm sorry about that, but I wanted to get you guys some content today about Eric Gonzalez, the NLDS game five. Of course, tomorrow we will be back here on YouTube, Odyssey, Spotify, Google play, Apple podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, make sure you follow this podcast on Twitter at locked on pirates. You can also follow me on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan. Enjoy the games tonight. Use the promo code locked on on betonline.ag if you want to get in on the action on Thursday night football, hockey, baseball, preseason basketball, if you want to even. There's so much stuff going on tonight, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you tomorrow on the flip side, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. Thank you so much for making Locked On Pirates your first listen every single day. Have a good one, guys.